Today we are talking about the histology of small intestine. The food pipe starting from the mouth will open up in the stomach and then continues to be the small intestine which will eventually open up in the large intestine. The small intestine is actually a pipe and we will cut a section of the pipe of small intestine and look in detail. This is the pipe of the small intestine. It has different kinds of layer within it. The outermost layer is of single cell. This is called the serosa layer. It is made up of single cell layer. After the serosa layer comes the next layer of muscles. This layer is also called muscularis propria. That means proper muscle layer. It is made up of smooth muscles. There are two kinds of muscles present here. One is longitudinal muscle. And the other one is circular muscle. These two forms the muscularis layer of small intestine. After the muscularis layer comes the submucosa layer. It has some folds and the folds of submucosa layer are called the fold of cucking. And after that comes the mucosa layer which has lots of villi and lots of invaginations in it. This is the mucosa layer. Now we will cut the pipe and put it flat to understand the layers properly. This is the single cell layer, the serosa layer. After that comes the muscle layer, the muscularis propria, which has the longitudinal muscle and the circular muscle. Both of them are smooth muscles. Let's see the orientation of these two muscles in the small intestine. The first one, the longitudinal muscles, are responsible for the increase or decrease of the length of the pipe. And the second kind of muscle, the circular muscles, are responsible for the increase or decrease of diameter of the intestinal pipe. It surrounds the pipe of the intestinal tube. After the muscularis layer comes the submucosa layer. Submucosa layer has some folds and the folds of the submucosa layer are called folds of cucking. And it also has blood supply in it. Blood supply is also extended to the mucosa layer for absorption of the nutrition from the food. The mucosa layer has lots of villi for absorption and also has invaginations. The invaginations of the mucosa layer are also called crypts of Leverkuhn, also known as intestinal glands. The villi and the intestinal glands are surrounded by different kinds of cells. These cells have different different functions and the cells of the villi are responsible for the absorption. So they have 
lots of microvilli for increasing the surface area for absorption. Now we will cut a section here and we'll look into the villi and the crypts of Libukun and their cells in detail. This is the villi of mucosa layer and the invagination. This invagination, also called crypts of Libukun, or the intestinal gland and this part is the villi. The villi has cells shaped in columnar and are responsible for absorption of nutrition from the food. They have microvilli for more surface area for more absorption. These are the absorptive cells and the villi also have blood supplies for absorption. The absorptive cells absorb the nutrition and pass them to the blood cells. These are the goblet cells. The function of the goblet cell is to secrete mucus for the lubrication of the surface. Now coming to the cells of the Crips of Lebukun. The important cells of Crips of Lebukun are enteroendocrine cells. These cells secrete important hormones. It secretes cholecystokine CCK and gastric inhibitory peptide that is GIP. Next important cell of Krebs of Lebukun is penit cells. Penit cells are pyramidal in shape and these cells secrete lysozyme which is an antibacterial agent. Next comes the stem cells. These stem cells give rise to different kinds of cells. These stem cells give rise to the epithelial cells also, which are situated in the epithelial portion of the intestine. These are the epithelial cells. Stem cells give rise to these epithelial cells also. Goblet cells are also present in the intestinal gland for mucose secretion. Mm -hmm.